Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Primary results have been released by the Department of Home Affairs on the investigation of Chedima's citizenship here in South Africa. The Minister of Home Affairs has released a statement that Chedima's mother might have involved in criminal activities pertaining her identification 23 years ago. Now, South Africans are losing their mind celebrating this wonderful news. They are even saying, King, we demand you to apologize because we told you that Chedima is a Nigerian and not a South African. Well, today I've got an apology, of course, for you guys, and I want us to discuss this matter in depth. Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Black Heart, the Hustle Continuer, made to inspire your goals and dreams. 100% good quality clothes are now available at affordable prices. T-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, bucket hats, and more. Place your orders now. 0684736908. Instagram Black 7576. Facebook page Black Heart. Peace in pen Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I'm your host, Kahi Sushongwane Zinjiva Sono, and we back at it again with another one. And this time around, again and again, I told you guys, it won't be the end for us addressing this Chedima uh, situation. Now, primary results have been uh, released by the Department of Home Affairs saying that there is some um criminal activities that happened 23 years ago pertaining the birth of chetima it's very interesting that this um outcome has come out because it's the family of chetima that asked the department to clarify this mess that has been making rounds on social media now i am very excited because now there is light and direction as to this news uh, we were sick and tired of what was happening in the social media and the energy that african people were taking out on chedima i feel was like unwarranted and it's i still feel like it's unfair but we have to listen now to the department and hear what their investigation outcomes has come and they've said at first sight they have seen that there is something that is not clear and the department will release a full statement later but let's listen first to the initial statement that the department has released on on um, to the media uh, thus far an ongoing investigation by home affairs has found mm -hmm. prima facie indications of fraud committed by chedima adichina's mother the department of home affairs herewith provides an update on the ongoing investigation into the citizenship of miss chedima adichina a contestant in the upcoming miss sa event the reason for the ongoing nature of the investigation is that its scope has broadened since the original request received from the organizers of Miss SA based on the information uncovered by Home Affairs investigators thus far. The department nonetheless provides this update to the public based on that official request and consent. We will provide a final update once the investigation is concluded. Upon receiving the request for investigation, the department mm -hmm. deployed every resource at its disposal to establish the truth. This has included archival research, visits to hospitals and site visits to verify information. From the information we have uncovered thus far, the Department of Home Affairs can indicate that prima facie reasons exist to believe that fraud and identity theft may have been committed by the person recorded in Home Affairs records as Chedima Adachina's mother. Adachina herself could not have participated in the alleged unlawful actions of her mother as she was an infant at the time when the activities took place in 2001. An innocent South African mother, whose identity may have been stolen as part of the alleged fraud, suffered as a result because she could not register her child. The department has broadened its investigation to identify and pursue any officials involved in the alleged scheme and is obtaining legal advice on the implications of the alleged fraudulent activity on Adichina's citizenship status. And finally, upon the completion of the investigation, Home Affairs intends to press criminal charges and convict all implicated parties. 
This case, which stems from alleged fraudulent activities committed 23 years ago, highlights the urgent need for the digital modernization of home affairs applications, adjudication and verification processes to insulate the department against fraudulent interference, similar to the reforms undertaken at the South African Revenue Service in the late 2000s. The case also highlights the reason for the department's blocking of certain duplicate IDs and that the court ordered unblocking of these documents must be handled with caution. Throughout this process, Home Affairs is guided by our commitment to both restoring and upholding the rule of law as well as the rights of all parties. Yeah, yeah that, is, that, is a, that is a mouthful. And that is, um, for me, I welcome this news, to be honest with you guys. I'm welcoming this news and in welcoming it, there's some, some clarifications that I want to make. Um, some of you might not know uh, what Prima Faki means. Ne? Um, you, of course, you are here to learn. Uh, we are here to learn from each other. And so Prima Faki means on first sight. Okay, it's a, it's a, um, uh, I think it's a Latin word that means on first sight, meaning in their first investigation, um, on first sight, it looks like that's why the 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 doctor, uh, Doctor Leon, the minister of of um, of home affairs, is using the words may may the mother may have and um you know she's using he's using those words deliberately because it is not conclusive yet okay so on first sight they are saying upon the birth of of chedima the, the the mother might have stolen another person's what id number and registered um what you call uh, chedima uh, because to register a child uh, 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 upon birth or natural birth, um, you need a South African ID, ID from the mother. I'm not sure how they do it now. I mean, um, how they did it 23 years uh, ago. But right now you have a section of home affairs at the hospital. When you leave hospital, you, you carry the, the what you call the identification of the child. Some people go, uh, they give birth, then after two or three days go to home affairs, um, depending on where they they, um, they have given uh, birth. So prima facie means on first sight. Upon upon their first investigation, there is there they, they, they might be uh, criminal activities that happen there. So that, that brings about light because we know that uh, it has been said in the public domain that Chidima's mother is from Mozambique, but the grandmother is South African, is Zulu, and all of those things. So I think when they when they give the final report, it will give more light as to what actually, why is it that she felt the need to, um, apparently, again, I'm, I'm using my words carefully, felt the need to steal someone else's identification. Also, when the final investigation comes, it means that 23 years ago, there was a child that was not registered who was South African, maybe, okay? If she stole a South African woman's ID and she was not, um, she did not have the necessary document, it means that there is a South African child that is working there, which is the case in, in, in many instances, who is working without, without proper identification. And that is a very sad thing to think about, to think that there is a, there is a, a child who did not get um, identification. You know, in, in hospitals, they, they steal children about, up, upon their birth. So it's very sad to know that this one, they might have stolen the, the opportunity to, to register lawfully upon birth. So that's something that is, that is um, that um, of course, your boy will not um, encourage. It's not nice if it happens to you or it happens to me, we would not like that. So um, um, I'm happy that they, they, they said they visited the hospitals. Uh, and um, I'm sure the, the documents are on the final uh, and it shouldn't take long. I think uh, uh, today when you guys watch it, they might release another statement or Friday on Women's Day. I don't think they'll do it on Women's Day, but uh, probably they will, they will, they will try to uh, conclude the investigation now because I'm, I'm sure they are not uh, too far from that. Um, so uh, we know when it comes to these uh, block IDs that 
um, the department, uh, the minister is talking about. In, I think this year early there was a report also. Uh, it was last year during Aaron Mutsulidi's time. It was this year or oh, last year during Aaron, Aaron Mutsulidi? His time has flo flown so much. I can't remember. I'll try to paste the, the article here. That there's more than seven hundred thousand duplicate IDs on the on the system of of um of uh, the home affairs meaning there are two people that are saying i am Kahiso Songwane and born at the same day born at the same hospital sometimes born in different places we know that uh, people get married without knowing on home affairs and all of those things because of corrupt uh, individuals so that that thing is what is happening but the number 700,000 and we are of course um thinking that it might be more but some of those people took home affairs to court and won and the court uh, said release release these people's id so that they can continue with their lives they cannot vote they cannot work they cannot open accounts they cannot study they cannot because uh, the system says they are deceased or the system says um um, and the, num uh, the ID number has been duplicated elsewhere and stuff like that. So the, the South Africans are happy uh, because of uh, this this news. They, they are so happy. I, I, I thought maybe we are getting land back. The amount of messages I got on my private phone because people watch my channel and some of you have got my phone numbers. I made a mistake some time ago to release my private numbers. So people are uh, WhatsApping me, calling me nonstop. King, we need an apology for you guys. And I said, listen, the reason why I was in particular attacking black South Africans, not attacking, uh, rebuking black South Africans, it was because black South Africans don't show the same energy like they, they do to other people. When it comes to black on black people, black South Africans excel in, in correcting the wrongs of other black people. For example, every black person in South Africa should consider Afri Forum an enemy, more than uh, the DA. Afri Forum is a racist uh, organization that makes sure that they are always showing you guys that they are racist. They want the apartheid flag to be uh, to be made lawful and all of those things. Then the chairperson of Afri Forum in Limpopo, uh, Robosdal, was found with a, a, a plant that produces, um, what you call, uh, a manufacturing plant that produces uh, drugs uh, worth of two, uh, two billion rand. The biggest drug bust in South Africa's history. Two billion rand in a farm owned by the Afri Forum owner. Black South Africans never made a serious noise about that. You would expect Black South Africans to have the same passion that they were fighting Chedima and fight Afri Forum. Why? Because Black South African children are on the receiving end of those drugs. How many of you have got uh, brothers and sisters that are drug addicts? Those that farm was producing these drugs, selling it to the uh, to 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 the communities, and our brothers and sisters are suffering as drug addicts because of an Afri Forum member. And you guys did absolutely nothing. You left it in the hands of um, the law enforcers. But with, with, with Chedima, with Mboro, with uh, so many cases where when, black, when a black person takes a wrong step, and I'm not saying Chedima took a wrong step here, um, you find that black people's anger um, is misdirected. The, the trauma that they have over suffering on apartheid is now misdirected on, on, on black people. That was my cry. To say, you guys must remember that you guys don't act the same when it comes to white people. Understand? And I said, what is South African? Miss South Africa is a private company. It's not like a, the, a department is running this, this, uh, this uh, beauty pageant. It's, it's, it's not a department. Um, and Miss South Africa has got um, uh, what you call entry... Uh, requisitions, uh, re requests that you, you must be this tall, you must be, you know, uh, there is a height um, a boundary for Miss South Africa. So if you are short, it means you, you cannot represent um, uh, as a Miss South Africa. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's the standard um, in the international world. 
So a short Zulu uh, child will not be able to participate in Miss South Africa because of her height, which is something that I find stupid. And I told you guys, Miss South Africa is, an, is, an, is, a, is a company that has been discriminating against black people from the word go. From 1956, on their first... Um, uh, competition they've been letting uh, Br uh britain people win they've been letting um uh dutch people win uh, you know and indian people win you would think that south african will even fight that but they don't even fight that they have a problem with an, a, a nigerian because i told you guys for those who are watching from outside of africa south africa nigeria and zimbabwe have got a love and hate type of a relationship there's a there's a cat and mouse type of a relationship that you you find between South Africa and especially Nigeria, you know, because of the, the level of confidence that Nigerians have is the, it's almost the same with South Africa. You don't know who has more confidence, Kenya, South Africa, or or Nigeria. They've got they they, they are very prideful. So that that pridefulness of Chedima celebrating her 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 uh but again her nigerian uh ethnicity it made south africans very angry it, it's not about them the mozambican murder it's not about anything it's about nigeria so uh people like bugate and mckenzie are of course <laughs> happy happy um but you know your boy can make any investigation and show you guys that uh, gaten mckenzie calls south africans lazy people you remember that Gideon McKenzie wrote his book and when he made a tour, when he was going around promoting his book, he said he does not understand why South Africans are so lazy. That's what he said. Now, let, I'm going to play uh, the evidence for you because I, need to, I cannot make such a claim without giving you evidence. But let's listen to this and I'll give you guys my final thought on the Chidima story. Everybody says, speak truth to power. Mm. Everybody want to tell the government what to do. Mm. But who tells us sometimes what to do? You look at our, our communities. Mm. You ask yourself, how did the Africans, the guys from Zimbabwe, the guys from the DRC, how, did they, how do they make it here? Because they are an integral part of this economy. So much so that if all of them have to decide to leave on a particular hour and go back to the country, okay. this yeah. country would not function. But the problem with us is that as black people uh, I'm talking about here, we, we, we are lazy. And people are scared to say that. I'm not scared to say black people are lazy. Mm -hmm. You know what? We, we do not want to do the things. We want to do the things that we studied for. We want to do the things that, that we, we, are, uh, we have, uh, have experience in. But sometimes you have to park the big car and start with a small skateboard yeah. in order for that to take you to the car. Yeah. Look at the Pakistanis. They come here all the way from Pakistan. And they open shops in our backyard. You know, it's, it's so confusing for me. How do these guys come here and open shops? And one of my friends, uh, I asked him, why should you make this guy open a shop in your backyard? He says to me, ah, oh, gee, I don't have funding. I said, you've got an iPhone. That phone is six grand. Yeah. How much stock do you think is in that shop? But you see, uh, we've been spoiled by tenders. Yeah. And somebody needs to tell the young people of today, it is not, if you wait for funding, you might wait forever. Mm. Get yourself out of the starting blocks, no matter how humble, no matter how small, but start somewhere. Well, and that's what this book is about. Well, let's talk about you. I mean, you, you spent 10 years in prison. I mean, what, what, were you, what were you in prison for? For robbery. For robbery. Okay, yes. you were there. He's telling people to start with a skateboard. He's telling people to start small. Um, but he went to prison for robbery, robbing people. And um, who knows, murdering people uh, and other uh, criminal activities that it was. I'm playing that video to show you guys that people change their tune because of where they are. And that is why I stick to my, to my tune of um, my stance of pan-Africanism. My stance is that I love every African child. I love every African um, brother and sister born are overseas or whatever, because African people are treated different from all the other races. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so I always find it strange that the Chinese are um, called Chinese and they speak Chinese. The, uh, the, the English are called English and they speak English. The Indians are called English and they speak Indian. 
Um, we can go on, on the Japanese are Japanese and they speak Japanese. The Africans with so many beautiful cultures among them are called Africans, but which language is African? Do you understand what I'm saying? But anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a thought that I always um, ponder within my mind. So um, what does this mean now for Chidima? Um, I should assume uh, I did not see any any um, any uh, uh, statements yet, but I should assume that Chidima would now step aside uh, from the competition um, because um, if her mother committed a crime 23 years ago when she was born, and remember Chidima is, is South African uh, by citizenship, um, um, we will argue when the final uh, results come out if it was a, a, a legal obtained or what. But um, if if indeed this is happening and she's receiving this news, I'm sure she won't want to continue with the competition. Even if she did, she wouldn't be in, at her um, her sober mind. She wouldn't be at her best because of this will affect any one of us if we were told our mother did something when we were born. I mean, that happens all the time. That's why some other people are saying, let um, uh, what you call DNA test for children be composite at hospital so people can know who their children and who their fathers are. Some of you, you found out when you grew up uh, who your father is because your mother lied or kept it as a secret. So for me, if I'm if I'm I'm here or I'm I'm advising her, I would say my queen, step aside. Um, like the the department, the minister of the department said, you you yourself did not commit any crime. Um, so now this thing has to be sorted out. Um, anyway, she qualifies to to be a South African because she has stayed here for so long. Uh, I think that application, if it, they had to fix it or whatever the case has to be, will be a, a rather easy process for her because she's she's been through uh, the school system. Um, I think she's got a, a degree in law, so you know she she's a person that has passed uh, through the system already. So I'm just saying that to say this, my African people, is is um, it's not something to celebrate because of the circumstance of which we are celebrating it. We are celebrating it because of Miss South Africa, a company that discriminated against black people in the beginning when it started. It's not something to celebrate. And Miss South Africa, like I said, is not a government initiative. It's a private company that is running this for profit and people are making money out of it. It's, it's not purely South African and that in, in, uh, introduced the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what you call, the, um, the people of South Africa into their full glory, if we had to be honest. So, um, yes, we're waiting to, he to hear the final um, results. I, I can't wait for the final results. I'm sad for Chidima. You guys know that I was uh, on her side 100%. Um, but um, Prima Faki, meaning on first sight, it looks like uh, there has been a crime committed. But I will always ask you, Africans, whenever there's a statement about bank. Uh, manipulating our currency. Let's use the same energy. Let's use the same energy with uh, the case of um, the, the way you guys were hammering on VBS and VBS was about 2 billion rand, but you did not hammer on the Afri Forum, the Afri Forum uh, case that was, um, um, that was uh, making drugs in a farm. You did not say anything. Um, the farm also of the the uh, 40, 25 uh, Libyans is white owned, white companies and all that. You don't respond the same, my African brothers and sisters. And that's what I, I will say uh, to this Chidima matter. Go on the comment section, say what you need to say. Uh, I don't stop anyone. I saw someone say, uh, King, you deleted my comment. Me, delete your comment. Oh, do you think anything you say can bother the old boy King? Mm -mm. It is, it is, um, it is immature to want everyone to side with what you're saying. But you need to have the maturity when you bring your point across, you bring it across respectfully. 
You understand? I'm not that person. I just swipe through comments, like, and comment on some that stand out and everything. But um, still, uh, Chidima, uh, Team Chidima, um, I wish her luck for the rest of her life should she drop out of the competition, of which I think she will. And, um, you know, I wish that um, maybe when they take her out, they bring one girl back in, you know, just to balance the numbers. Um, it's something that I'm, 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 I'm thinking that they would do. Uh, but I want to hear your thoughts on the comment session. Uh, what do you think Chitima must do going forward? And do you think also Miss South Africa should be a government initiative? It must be done by maybe the Department of, of Sports and Art and Culture. Uh, they should take it over and then uh, make sure that the Miss South Africa is truly Miss South Africa. It's not only about being the thinnest, tallest girl, but, you know, we've got uh, um, um uh, sisters with Nyash, and, um, uh, you know, short, tall, um, plus size, whatever. Why should, is, why should a Miss uh, South Africa be a thin, um, tall girl on heels? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, but you guys will give me your thoughts on the conversation. Again, I want to thank everyone that has participated in contributing to Baseta, the Pan-African School of Economics, Technology and Agriculture. We are building something that is very great. If you want to know more about the Pan-African School of Economics, Technology and Agriculture, visit our website www.baseta.co.za. Um, that is www.paseta.co.za. Go on our website, visit it, uh, browse through it, and um, you'll get some information there. And also, should you want to contribute your 50 rand, we are saying, African people, let's stop complaining about things. Let's stop complaining about the situation that we find ourselves in, in terms of the educational system, the poor educational system that has been fed to our children. But let's build our own school. So we've got a team of five gentlemen and more people uh, on the background that, have, that are helping us to build this school, Paseta. Um, it is only through your funding, it is only through African funding that we want to build this fund at this school. So please make sure that you send your 50 rand uh, should you agree with the initiative. Um, when you send it, please uh, reference with your name and, and type donation there. We'll appreciate it so much. You've got our WhatsApp numbers. Uh, you can contact us at any given time. Until we meet again, don't forget to pray. After you pray, stand up African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in pan-Africanism. I salute you.